Measuring the impact of place brand strategies in place economies. Part two of, I don't know if it was two, but actually maybe three, because we don't have yet all the answers. Spoiler alert, number one. But we have some answers and we have some number, numbers to share. So we don't even know if this is part two of three or even more. But this is something that will continue until we find the Holy Grail, even if it leads us to madness, which is actually the case we're in right now. But it's important for you to understand that today there are approximately, rough number, 900,000 queries related to nation, place, city, country branding aspects in search engines. Every year, approximately, there are 900,000 queries asking for information to understand what is nation branding, how to measure, etc., etc. From this number, 65% is branding, or nation branding, city branding, country branding, all local languages uh, together, and a percentage goes to marketing. We excluded placemaking, uh, just because it's a different nature related, but it's not the same thing, so we, here what you see is the breakdown of what people are searching. Yes, marketing is there, we're gonna talk about it in a second. And only 2% concerns measurement. So every year there are 15,000 searches concerning queries related concerning measurement. People asking for measurement, how to measure nation branding, how to measure city branding, what is the impact, and so on and so forth. When the world searches for this, they will lead or they will land into consultancies like, like us or different articles uh, that people uh, right, but they also land to one of the most important parts, which is uh, uh, academic papers. So the publicly available academic papers, the, where it's stored, it's these two providers. There's probably 362 million academic papers published, not about nation place branding, but from those three, 362 million, 12,000 are monothematic concerning nation branding, place branding, and so on and so forth. There's more. But this is the number, this is what the world finds whenever they search for this information. And only 100 papers talk, again, mathematically, about measurement. 0.1% talk and discuss about measurement. But when it comes to measurement and try to understand the importance of nation brands in the economy, not only in the economy, but also socially for the progress of the country or the city, there is zero papers that cover this. There is no model available out there, or at least that is solid enough, that demonstrates the correlation between the two. There's probably two papers that venture a little bit into that, but they don't go very further. And this is a problem, because there's no data and there is no consensus about this. Concerning measurement, there are information out there, and what you see here are indices and rankings that consultancies, research companies, provide to the sector, and this is very important. You may question methodology, you say if one does another way, but they are important for the sector. The private sector, in this case, is important for the public sector because this opens questions. When countries see their position, when they see where they are, when they see how they are performing, why am I in that position? What can we do better? It raises these questions, and this is good. This is healthy. This is healthy because it keeps the question open, open and the discussion open, and this is very, very important. However, those indices, they don't answer questions. They ask, there are questions, but there are no answers. And because there are no answers, then naturally, you're gonna start having questions about why shall we do this? What's the importance of all this? I have other things to do. There are more things that are more important. And so, oh, there's, you can only do it if you do it my way. <laughs> That's the only way. So this creates kind of what we call nation and place branding populism because it's difficult to justify sometimes. And there's always this challenge about what is it for the country? Because if we're doing this, what for the city, if we're doing this, what is it bringing value? And when I say value, it does not only have to be economic value, but social value for the development and for the progress of the country or the city. And the most common answer to this, like why there is no model, why there is no measurement model, is, uh, is this is the answer, which is it's impossible to be measured. You cannot do the two things. You cannot correlate perception and economic and social development. It's something that is impossible. 
If Google would have a translator, and you would type in on the Nation and Place Branding Dictionary, and you would put impossible to measure, this is what would be the answer, or similar to. No one wants to do it because it's extremely expensive. There is no guarantee on the return. It takes too long to do. It is difficult. There is no data available. Oh, even better, everyone will question it. <laughs> so, of course, it's impossible to measure in these terms. So it's expensive, there's no return, it's long, difficult, no data, available, polemic. This is absolutely perfect. <laughs> on top of things, there is no consensus on the definition of what nation branding is, or place branding, or city branding. There's no consensus. And here are some quotes from academic papers as well, saying, despite nation branding grow popularity, there is so much disagreement about this meaning and about its meaning and scope. Or, Despite an increasing number of articles, etc., there's still no common definition of what it is, and I continue with other papers that are very interesting. Researchers as well as practitioners still disagree on how the concept should be defined. Double perfect. This is brilliant. So, we don't know how to measure it, we don't know how to create a correlation, and by measurement I mean creating a correlation of the impact, and we don't even know how to define it. <laughs> this is absolutely superb. Let's do it. And we're going to do this for free. We're going to give this away, and we're going to publish everything for everyone to access. It's true. <laughs> so we embarked on this. We embarked on this journey, and we decided to go with our own resources, with our own funds, to go on this avenue and to go on this journey. And this presentation is a little bit, it's a twofold. I'll talk about numbers. But I think it's important you understand the journey and understand where we have been and what's the status and the decisions we've made so that you understand when you see the data, what is the data that you're looking uh, into. So there's numbers, but it's important to understand this. The journey is very, very important. So what's the journey and what's the scope of the study? Number one is this, is understand how much positive perceptions about a place impact its economic and social performance. That's number one, so create a correlation between the two, either find the model or understand this. And the second thing is, if the initiatives that countries, regions, and, and cities do are impacting that perception and are bringing value, social and economic value, to the country. Today I'll be talking about number one, some aspects of number one. We don't have yet number two, but more to come, more to come, okay? If we're still sane uh, <laughs> mentally. So, although there's no consensus about the writing of what's nation branding and place branding, at least there's a consensus about the idea of what it is. And if it's not difficult or it's difficult to explain in words what nation place branding is, at least it's easy to understand in images. Nation place branding is this, is when you mention the name of the city or the country, the emotions it generates, the perceptions it has. And there's kind of a consensus, unwritten rule about this that everyone agrees, it's about perceptions. And these perceptions impact, and so this was good. This is how we started. We said, okay, it's about perceptions. Great, we're excited, Let, we're enthused, let's go. Yes, we're starting the journey. First step, super great, fantastic. Second step, what are we measuring? Are we measuring the perception of what? What are we trying to correlate? When we talk about nation place branding, we have like, at least us, we have like five dimensions. And here, and dimensions are the audiences that are affected by perception. We have five, other consultancies have others, papers mention others, but there's kind of, again, kind of a consensus that it is about exports, it's about investment, it's about the local population, about the local citizens, it's about tourism, the attraction of talent, and so on. And here we had to make a decision, and we decided that from all of those, it had to fit both countries and cities. So what we're trying to do is to measure the perception and the impact of perception in the dimensions of attraction of talent, it's common to every city and country, attraction of investment, and attraction of tourism. And when I say attraction, I say the type of tourism does not need necessarily mean more, uh, but it's better, okay? So, okay, so far so good. We have the three dimensions. It fits the three purposes, which is fantastic. But then we asked, very good, so what are we measuring? What is exactly that we are measuring? It's about perception, but is it a campaign? Is the effectiveness of a campaign on how to attract someone to come? Not necessarily. Actually, this conversation open, which was nation branding or place branding, is completely different from nation and place marketing. And here, credit to Boys, and he started this conversation, he opened this conversation some time ago, and I think it's very relevant. 
Nation branding is completely different from nation marketing, or place branding is completely different from place marketing. They are two things, completely interconnected sometimes, but they are two different things. Nation branding comes first, and place branding as well, and place uh, marketing comes after. The first one, it's about perception. It, you build perception through actions, activities, and policies, and demand is about promotion, and that's what nation place branding is about. It, one is about perception, and one, the other one is about demand. This manages emotion, reputation, perception, and this is about lead generation and transaction. And when I present this to countries and cities, they say, I, I want this. This is the thing that matters the most. Incorrect answer, because better perception leads to better demand. And I purposely use the word better than men, not necessarily more than men. And we had some very interesting sessions today, which is maybe it's not more that you want, but better, or different types of audiences that you want to attract to the place and how you want to do that for, for the country. So the focus of the study clearly was not about the conversion. It was not about the demand. It was about how this impacts that in the end and other things. So the focus was about perception. OK, so far, so good. There you go. See, it's an easy journey so far. It's going well. And we said, OK, great. So we're measuring perception of countries and cities and how that perception impacts the economic development, social development. What is perception? We had to go back to that question. We were avoiding the definition, and there's no consensus about nation place branding. But we had to reach a consensus about what constitutes perception. Can you imagine if there's no consensus about definition of what it is? Can you imagine getting a consensus of defining what are the elements that constitute perception? So we had to do that. We had to see what were the elements, the components of perception, because if we are able to define this, and more importantly, if we are able to reach a consensus of these, it's a groundbreaking moment because then we could measure those and, and, and the sector, if there's kind of a baseline for the sector, everyone will understand what is important to measure that influences perception, right? So how are we going to do this? We said if it has not been defined until now, or at least the consensus, many attempts, many discussions, we know, but if there's not a common ground, if the sector is not united on this, how are we going to get this, 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 uh, this assignment or how are we going to get this um, alignment and this consensus? And what we've done was we looked into other sectors. And we said, this can't be possible. I mean, you go to the moon, you go to the, you cannot reach a consensus about what's perception. No, we had to reach that consensus. And we looked into other sectors such as medical industry, defense, real estate, all the things about how do people reach consensus on something that it's impossible to reach consensus. So we understood that there's a method that is called the MCDA, the multi-criteria decision analysis, which basically is a panel and it's proved academically, used all over the world. Many cities and countries apply this for other things, and we replicated this for nation place branding, which is how to reach consensus about what constitutes perception. We brought in one of the biggest experts in this field. We brought him over, we brought him into the project, into the company, and we created the model. They were like 53 hours preparing this multi-criteria decision analysis, which, to summarize, it's a panel that people evaluate the possibilities, and based on that evaluation, the biggest score wins. Anyways, everything will be published and you will see how this was done. But we got it. We got it. And this is, we got the, we got the, 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 the model in place. Again, 53 hours spent just developing this. And here we go. Fantastic. Let's do it. And the multi-criteria decision analysis expert said, let's do it. Okay, fantastic. So what's next? I said, well, you have to reach the experts about this. And I said, fantastic. Let's reach the experts. And he said, who are the experts? And he said, you tell me. And I said, no, you tell me. He said, no, you tell me. Said, I'm the expert. <laughs> and he goes like, no. You have to find a good enough number of experts that you need to ask. And preferably not the consultants, but people that deal with this on an everyday basis. So you have to contact a big number of countries, regions, and cities to answer this. And this is when a little devil popped up in my brain. Said, just, yeah, just let this go. Just, this, is, this is for some reason that no one has ever done this. It's like, just, you tried, right? Bloom, you tried. The team tried. Oh, everything is. And he said, no, look, this will not solve the problem. 
So this is when we decided to call the cavalry. And this is when we contacted City Nation Place and say, who can help us on this? Who can take us into the next step? And we called City Nation Place and we explained the project. And they said, yes, we're crazy enough to do it with you. Let's do it. With one condition, this is not a commercial project. There's no association with this. We are independent and this is really just because it's for the good of the sector. And we said, fantastic. On top of that, we decided to bring academia. So we have researchers from two universities, these two universities here, it's not the universities, it's the researchers from these two universities, to go with us on the journey to see if everything is valid from an academic or at least as valid as possible from an academic point of view. Because if we don't get this, then it's difficult for you to then justify this and use this in your day-to-day -day work. And of course, who was missing? The countries, regions, and cities. So we had to contact with City Nation Place, all over the world, the experts, which are you, to validate what constitutes perception so that later on we could measure that. So we did it. So we contacted, what you see here is 48 countries, region, uh, regions and cities. Thank you so much, many of you are here. And all of this is sounding familiar to you. This is not over yet. That's the bad news. Uh, the good news is we'll continue to talk. But these that you see here, either were actively engaged, we had several mails, we had meetings one-to-one -one and together with City Nation Place throughout the year. You can imagine how difficult this is to, to reach, right? So we were able to get this and 26 answered that Delphi panel. Thank you again for them, MCDA, um, to contribute to that. And there's more that will we'll continue to, to close that. But we have already some numbers. So we had 26 that answered this, this, this constitution of, of definition of perception. And the good news, and which is something that is fantastic, is that we have it. We have it. We have the elements that constitute perception that influence the overall perception of a country and a city. A consensus from the sector. This is an historical moment. There is a model that, when you're gonna see those ones, you're gonna say, well, this is not so surprising for me. And they're not, but it's a consensus. Why is this useful? Of course, from a measurement perspective, it's those ones that you have a measure. But when you talk with your constituents, when you talk with other stakeholders, how many times, and everyone will know those, you'll, we'll call them clouds, types of perceptions, you'll all say, well, there's not, no, so, no, not so surprising. But what's important there is that you know that when you go into your day-to-day -day activities, when you talk to your stakeholders in town, and you talk about all this, they're going to go, but what are you trying to measure? Again, perception, why those, not others, and so on. And you have something that you can use and say, this has been validated academically and also by the sector. You'll thank me later because this saves months of work because most of your time, as you know, is about explaining <laughs> all this, right? So that's 80%, 70% of your time explaining why place branding is important, why nation branding is important, how to do it, how to measure it. And then you're going to have journalists saying, no, but it's also very important the item, whatever, and you go say, yes, we can measure that, but that's not what constitutes perception. Who said that? 44 countries, regions and cities, the sector. Thank you. Let's move on to the next thing. So I'm not going to show it yet because I'm going to make you suffer a little bit uh, because at least for you to have a 0.2% of suffering of this journey, okay? Um, but what was important here was, okay, we have this. Now we have to test these types of perceptions to then analyze and to measure and try to correlate with the economic and social data. So we need the data. Let's get the data. Who do we need the data? We need to ask the countries and the cities. Just a list of a few things, not much, so we can correlate with perception. All the countries and the cities were like, what? Yes, we need this because there's no data available and we need this data to create the correlations. And then suddenly, the devil came in again and said, guys, you've tried. <laughs> this is, why are you doing this? This is, it's fine. You've done a great job. I mean, you can publish a paper already on that multi-criteria thing that you've defined about what constitutes perception. And we said, no. So again, we contacted the countries, regions, and cities. Thank you. Thank you. They contributed with data. These are the ones. Thank you. Thank you. You've prepared all this. You spent time on all this. You've sent this. Not in vain. <laughs> and we are using this to correlate with the other things. So finally, finally, I'm going to talk about the numbers. Thank you for accompanying me on the journey on the 0.2%. I hope it was not too painful, or at least I hope it was, so I feel a little bit. But I'm going to talk about, as I mentioned, objective number one. 
which is, and the things I'm going to present here is what constitutes perception. So I'm going to talk about the elements that compromise or influence the overall perception, the themes that are more important and that influence the perception of countries, regions, and cities, and that leads to that demand. The second thing is a number about the impact of perception on the willingness. How much perception influences the transactional part, by transactional is a physical thing, does not necessarily mean economic, but we're gonna look into the economic part. There's other ways to do this. For instance, you can do this on perception, and I saw one of the presentations before has about on, um, on influence, but this is different, is we want to understand how much, how much in numbers. I want the number in percentage, how much does impact potentially the economy, right? And then initial correlations between those clouds and how those clouds influence the overall perception, right? And that's, or the correlation between the two. So, here we go. What constitutes perception? The 13 clouds. And like I said, this is probably going to be, uh, like I said, a spoiler alert. You're going to go like, well, I knew that, you know, I don't know. Foreign affairs, governance, safety, and of course, well-being, society and value. Yes, of course. You go not even outside. You go to the coffee and everyone will start to say, no, but there's one missing, but there's... No, this is a unity that the sector reached. Not us, you. Okay, again, you'll have all this to, to work on, but how much the perception of these clouds influences the overall perception is the next thing to do. So we want to know, for instance, if you have a perception of culture, heritage, and art very high, but low society and values, if this compromises the overall perception or not. So I'm already advancing a little bit on the next steps, and that's, we're not talking about this today because we don't have this yet. But we're gonna create that alpha and that correlation about this. Now, these are the 13 clouds, and I want to stop here because it took a year to reach this with everyone participating here. And if anyone says that this is simple, I'll throw the microphone, okay? So that's, but these are the 13 clouds. We're still adjusting and going through another round just to close this up. Okay, but uh, in principle, these is the final ones that you validated. Now let's go to the other topic. The impact of perception on willingness. The tangible side. What are we doing? We're measuring perception from very negative to very positive. How much does this influence the transaction? Transaction. And transaction can be go there, visit, live. This study has all these countries. This is data from, from us from from perception from global audiences about countries and cities. Not all are here marked, but all the ones that were involved in the study will be here. We're still work in progress and feeding this, uh, this deck, but it's important, all of you that participated in the study will be measured here, but we have also to include others to, to create the analysis. Now, what's really interesting to see is that there is a linear correlation, very, very linear correlation, that the better the perception, the higher the value in terms of transaction. And this is percentage, so it means that you have an edge of 20, 30% facing other countries or other cities if you have a better perception than the other. And what we're gonna do next is to correlate this with the economic side and the talent attraction side and the tourism side to see exactly that. Now, what's interesting about all this is that you start to see how much a decimal, 0.1, is important on the willingness to. So if you increase, and this is a global average, and then you'll see, I'll show here by continent, it changes by continent, and if you do this by market, it also changes, but on and all, on an average, again, still work in progress, there's a 3.3% increase in one decimal. So what we're saying is, if you increase um, uh, one point, one point, 1 point, 1.0, from 2.5 to 3.5, you have a 33% higher chance or higher transaction thanks to perception. Again, this changes by continent. So you have a 4%, uh, 4% a 3%, 2%, 2%, 3%, 3.6% in one decimal increase. Half a point, 0 0.5, if you don't want to say, it, but you go from 3 to 3.5, you have 20% increase on the economic development of, of the country, the region, or the city. This is applicable for the two. What's fascinating in all this is the R. You see this R, for the ones that don't know, the closer to one, the more bulletproof it is, the more um, uh, uh, mathematically proven uh, it is. And we also see a variation, for instance, from, it, it changes the perception if you're talking about the willingness to visit the place, to invest or do business, 
or to work and live. You see that the most important one is definitely talent. The perception people have about the city, about the country, is very, very important for the talent dimension and for the attraction uh, di dimension. Then it's tourism and then it's talent. This is a couple decimals more. Now, moving to the, next, to the last slide. Initial correlation between clouds and general perception. Here, I just want to show you two, two images, and then we can move, because I'm 35 seconds ahead, or late. Um, the second objective we're doing here, or the third objective we're doing here, is like I said, this is an example of a city. The perception, how this perception changes here. Like if you move five decimals on the products and services or in sports, as an example, does it have an effect at all in the overall perception or not? And what we're going to do is to create a model that you're able to correlate this and automatically you change it and you see immediately how that perception is going to take uh, there. Now we do know that this constitutes perception and it's, it matters. Look at the difference between country one and country two. So you see country two has a better perception because these clouds, as I mentioned, have a better perception than country number one. Okay, so the objective with all this is to keep on working and on this, so this is more of a, a sharing the process about this. We're gonna talk a little bit about the next steps, um, but what we want is to give to the sector a model that you can use, a model that you can justify to your partners, to your stakeholders, so that they understand the importance of perception, and then ultimately, on if you want, on the marketing, which is one of the things that also uh, impacts. That's it. Thank you very much. So I am scared to ask this, Jose, and Kate is even scareder. <laughs> What are the next steps? <laughs> so, so basically, this is where we start. We started more than a year ago, and this has been the status of the process. We are now, uh, we were supposed to present the final report today, so a year ago, but we were not able to do it because of, as you've seen, the things we find along the way on finding that holy grail. So this is where we are right now, is on phase five, but we, we anticipate at least five or until step 10 to, to have this, which we intend to present in City Nation Place 2023, the final, final report. Until then, we are going to work on finalizing the models. We're gonna have one-to-ones to explain to the countries on the meetings to explain how everything is doing, validate this, and then preparing the documentation for that. So I think, well, I just want to highlight this and then I'll stop, Claire, which is, we would like very much to select the next phase for the objective number two you saw to see how much the initiatives that you're doing impact overall perception economic development. We need a few countries and cities that are able to go into the next step with us on the data analysis so we really understand what they're doing so that then we correlate with the other data. That's how we're going to do from a methodological point of view. We can talk about this after in the coffee break, but we need some more volunteers for the cause. Thank you. Thank you.